What up, guys? DTA family, everyone that's listening to this on my YouTube, Instagram, wherever you are. I'm with a very special guest. We are with Grace Sham, one of our DTA superstars. Grace, say hi. Hi. Yes. So, Grace, tell everyone who don't know, um, tell them who you are, where you're from, and what you do. Yeah. So my name is Grace Sham. I am from Vancouver, Canada. And I was just telling everybody earlier that it's a cool 17 degrees right now and it's supposed to be 25 degrees in Vancouver today. So if anybody's thinking about visiting Vancouver, it's a really good time to come. Our summers are beautiful and I, I'm just so in love with our city. Uh, so I, any chance I get to promote it, <laughs> I will do it. <laughs> it's so nice here. Um, I am a people and operations manager for a restoration company. Um, and, uh, and my passion is, uh, I actually do, I did makeup in the past. That's something that I used to do. And now I'm in restoration and it's so different, but, um, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm dealing with people and, and, uh, and that's what I love. Mm, yes. You have two boys as well. Happily married. Yeah, mother of two married. Um, my boys are 10 and seven and they're a handful, but, um, they're older now. So I get a lot of time to myself now that I didn't have before. Yes, yes. So tell everyone, um, how long have you been with the DTA fam? So I started on, I think, July or June, June last year. So it's just a, just over a year now. Okay, cool. And how would you describe your journey? You know, it's been I an interesting trained. ride, but yeah. So yeah, I thought about it. I'm so glad I got some of these questions uh, beforehand. And I had to really think about this one. Um, my journey was well, I would say it's bittersweet because it was first bitter, then sweet. That's how I would describe my journey. Okay. Um, talk to us more about that. Like when you first started, you know, joining, like what were your expectations? I, you know, I think my expectations were, were so high. Like I wanted, I, I mean, you, you join, you see people around you talk about how they've you know, lost 20 pounds, 25 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds. And then, and then I join <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I've, I've lost, I've lost nothing. <laughs> and I, and we're, there were times where I'd reach out to you, Pat, and I'd be like, am, am I the only student that's like, that's never lost any weight in this program? Like, and, and that, that took a, a long time for me to get over because I mean, I, I had, you know, I, when I, first signed up, I was like, these are my goals. I want to be 120 pounds and I want to do, and, and, um, and I felt like, yeah, that was the part for me that was really hard because uh, that's what I expected of myself. Mm. But then realizing later that that's, that's actually, maybe you even knew, like, that's not actually what I wanted. Mm. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. So what did you learn along the way? You know, you were set 120 pounds. I get there. I'm a winner but you know things changed things swerved a bit and you know you've accomplished so much to so tell everyone like the learning lessons along the way so i mean there was like i would beat myself up of course that's where the bitter part was in the very beginning it's uh you know uh, how come other people can do this how come other people are losing this weight how come other people are are like i'm such a like i'm such a failure and I'm so such a, you know, I, how, I'm such a disappointment. I would reach out to you, Coach Pat, often. I'm like, are you disappointed in me? Like, am I the worst student you've ever had? And and then slowly I realized, and it, I think it's a lot of those mindset sessions on the Monday mindset training where it's like it, it you really had to think about what was important to you. And, and I had to stop. One of the things in one of those sessions was like to not compare yourself to others and that this is my journey. And just because somebody else lost it in X amount of time, that's their journey and that's them. And I'm not them. And so it was learning, there was those little things along this way that realized, okay, well, all I can do right now is just stick to the program, do and put in 100% of what, what's asked of this program. And, and then I, I, I tried to do that. So slowly and slowly, I realized that being 120 pounds wasn't that important to me what was the most important to me was that i felt good in my body do you feel good in your body uh, the best i've ever felt the best i've ever felt yeah i got tingles that's really cool <laughs> um, 
Uh, and I'm not 120 pounds that I thought I wanted to be. Like, that's the thing that is like so nuts to me is I was so fixated on being that 120 pounds, so fixated on it. That will bring me happiness. That will bring me joy. <laughs> I am going to be successful. <laughs> and I still feel all those things. <laughs> yeah. Um, like working with you has been a joy. It's been a blast, you know, um, only you showed up like through the ups and downs you've showed up. Um, so I, I can't wait to like get into it even more. Um, tell us about one of the things earlier on in the program was I knew with you, even though we wanted to lose the weight, you didn't want to sacrifice your social life. And like, I didn't want you to think that you had to it as well. And I did, wasn't sure what you've done in the past. So I had to like get you to understand that there's a process that we'll go through and you can still be good time grace. So tell us about how your social life um, impacted your journey and how it is today versus the beginning. Um, so for like the long, as long as I can remember, I'd always prioritize my social life above everything. It would be my, that's, that's what I would do. Like I would, you know, I would work out so that I could party. That's like, I would, that's the only reason why I would go to the gym is because, okay, if I do this, then I can still sustain this lifestyle of going out every day, eating late at night, drinking a lot. Um, you know, that, that's, 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 that was my reputation. I was that girl that went out um, and I got everybody to drink and just so that I could drink more myself, you know, I would um, ha have a lot of fun. We, and I do that a few times a week and I would feel like crap in the morning, but I, pull myself to the gym just so that I can burn off some of that calories that I in, in took, you know, um, from the day before. And that was my life for a long time. And uh, I think as, as it became, as I lived that life, I think people had the expectation, that's just who I, who I was now at that point, you know, that's, just, you've done that for so long, 20 years, probably of my life. I went through that being good time, grace, people knew me as good time, grace, you know, we'll have a good time if you go out with grace. <laughs> and then it became like an expectation and I expected that of myself I expected me to be the person to make sure everybody had a great time and in order for them to have a good time I have to be having a really good time and so that that's just the pressure I put on myself mm. now there was a month in April that we had an accountability challenge right so talk to us about how sticking to like you know no drinking in the month of April how that affected your social life then yeah, that challenge couldn't have come at a better time. And it, um, I feel like that challenge was made for me. <laughs> it's funny how the universe aligns like that. Um, so it was, it was, it was, I was, so when I took on that challenge, I was like, I'm not going to drink for the month of April. And I had that mindset that I'm like, I'm, I'm going to do this. And so quickly, you know, um, I think it was April 1st, the challenge started by April 3rd, I already faced a challenge, a roadblock, you know, so two days in, someone's like, okay, Grace, like, like my boss came into work and is like, we're going to celebrate this thing that happened today. We're going to go into the office, the boardroom, and we're going to have some Prosecco, Grace, of course. And that's, that's my drink. <laughs> that was my drink of choice. And, and, and I had to, and I had to, you know, there's a moment there where I'm like, I, you know, that's my boss. <laughs> he never comes in and asks me to go for a drink with him. Um, and I had to make that choice, like, Grace, what are you going to do here? Are you going to go in there and, and, and do what, what he wants? Or are you going to go and do something that you promised yourself? And in that moment, I just like, I have to make a decision. Like, who am I? Do my words mean anything to myself? And, and, and then I was like, I'm, and I made that, I was like, you know what? Uh, Tony, <laughs> I'm looking at my door right now because I'm at work. <laughs> and I remember that day he came in here and I was like, I, I can't because I, uh, I am not drinking for this month. And he's like, oh, OK. And then he walked away and I was like, oh, that, that was so easy. Like, why did I build this thing up in my head to be so difficult? Like what I thought I'm going to have to explain to him and I'm going to have to like tell him why. And I'm going to have to like there's just so many things that popped in my head that I would have to overcome. And I was like, no, we just walked away. It's like, didn't affect his day. <laughs> so that, that was crazy. That was the first, the first day, it was two days in. And I remember that. And then 
because I faced that challenge and I overcame it, the following days became easier. That's super powerful. I can totally relate. I think a lot of people in this community that's going to watch this later as well um, can relate. You know, drinking is one of those things. You know, it's like, well, can I have it? And if I do, how much? Um, and if you don't know how to track your food, it gets really difficult as well because three glasses of wine can add up to like four or five and you're doing two bottles and you're like, God damn, tomorrow I don't feel like eating any health. It's the usually the after effect of drinking. But anyway, that's another call. Um, okay, so what has been your biggest achievement today in this program? Like what are you most proud of? The, I'm, the most proud is is my, I think my mindset now. Like I, one of the, one, and, and that's, this is so important. I want to talk about the calls because I think, or not the calls, like the, the Zoom, the Zoom calls. Yeah, I guess it's the calls, the, the mindset ones and the mindset Monday ones. There was one specific call where um, I remember, and this one changed my life actually, because I remember Joe saying that she didn't she's like oh I'm about 130 pounds now my goal is to be 150 and my, my jaws dropped I'm like you want to be 150 pounds like I mean like wow you look amazing and and like already and you you want to put on 20 pounds like that just blew my mind and I'm like I I want to be that person the person that's not afraid of like being gaining weight and looking good and eating well and like that that that's the thing that I'm most proud of right now is I'm not scared of food. I'm not scared of putting on weight. I look at the scale now. It doesn't mean anything to me anymore. It's like, Oh, okay. Well, looks like I gained a pound today. That's fine. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't even mean anything to more. Like I feel good. I feel my, mentally sharper. And that's, I think the most, the most, like I, I, the, the, the thing that, the DTA has given to me and like being through the program, one of the, the biggest th takeaways of it is like, I'm not, I'm not scared anymore of things. Hmm. So give me an example of like what you were possibly scared of before that you feel like, Oh, no problem now. Well, yesterday, for example, like we had a, <laughs> we had a, a burrito night, you know, I put, sour cream on my burrito I like I would have never done that in the past because <laughs> I would have been like sour cream is extra calories like first of all I wouldn't even have eaten that burrito like I would have just made a salad and not had the the wrap because you know barbs are bad and and uh sour cream is fats and like I I would have just had lettuce and tomatoes and I would have put a little bit of salsa on there and had some chicken and and not enjoy my meal but no like these days I eat things that I want to eat. I'm not scared of it anymore because I know it's not bad for me. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's just a learning curve that a lot of people don't get to because they're following such wrong information and I can't blame them. There's so much rubbish out there. Um, so for you, Grace, you sent me a photo like a few months ago. Um, do you remember what that photo was? As particularly as is in particular about your legs. Do you remember sending that photo? <laughs> My cellulite photo. <laughs> yeah. So tell everyone. Um, yeah what that was all about yeah so i didn't even I mean, no uh, it's funny because i didn't even realize that i had cellulite because i was so i was so like i was just i hated so many other parts of my body that i didn't even notice my cellulite like that wasn't even the thing that was bothering me because i hated my stomach i hated my arms i hated my legs like there was way so many other things to see <laughs> that i hated and um and, and those progress photos you know i you know, take a picture and I'll, I won't look at them that often. But, um, you know, as you go through and you progress through the journey, you you see your progress and then you start falling in love with your photos and you see, you look at your photos more and more. And I think at one time it became my screen, like in my, 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 my home page, you know, it was like, oh, like I was looking at my photo of myself, of my progress. And that's how much I started loving seeing my body and that's when I noticed that um when I was starting to compare because you can compare the photos mm. I was like oh my god like I I think I I think I don't have cellulite anymore oh my god I didn't even know I had cellulite and that's when I took the photo and I sent it to you because I was like no like look look at this <laughs> this is crazy <laughs> uh, that was really cool you know guys to give you guys perspective like being uh she was in the academy for over a year the first four to five months was really just getting through the fact that she's in a fitness journey. 
It's like, you're here now. You ain't going nowhere. And what are we going to do? Like try something else? Like you've tried so many things. We got to stick to one process and stick with it. Whether you lose one pound, two pound, 10 pounds, you got to stick this thing. I promise you. And then there was a shift in you. There was a shift inside you where you realize, shit, like I'm doing this. This is a lifestyle change. I'm not trying to get anywhere. I'm right here. And I'm working out. I'm doing my best. Like my weekends are still my weekends. I didn't sacrifice. And we had this like conversation. And, and then when you sent me this photo, I'm like, she's celebrating herself. Because I'm always telling you and others, go celebrate your success. Go share. You're winning. Be proud. You know, and a lot of people, especially you guys, are like, oh no, like I'm not good enough. What about her? She's doing better than me. And like when you first like really got out there and like, I'm doing good, I knew that's when like transformation happened in front of my very own eyes. So like I am that's cool. That's cool to see. It wasn't some, oh, I'm 125 pounds. It was more like my body has completely changed, which is really cool. Um, has how has fitness affected things at home? I know you got we got you got two kids. I know you're prepping for the family. Um, so tell me about that. Like how has that affected um, family life? Um, well, I think just it's the small in the small things, it's like I I can just like yesterday, you know, I can enjoy a meal with them. You know, I can I can eat with them. I don't have to make my own separate food or something different. I mean, for many years, I, I didn't eat rice. Like when, so when I would eat in a family meal, uh, they know now my family knows not to give me rice. So, you know, in Chinese Asian families, we all sit down, uh, we would plate, you know, put rice on everyone's plate. And then they, they would be um, all the main dishes in the middle and then you'll, you'll get your food. So uh, it's, you know, I mean, I've been married to this family for 10 years, my, my, my husband for 10 years now, and my mother-in-law knows now to not even give, put rice on my, my plate because she'll just know Grace doesn't eat rice because cause she's trying to lose weight. And, <laughs> and, and now it's like, no, no, mother-in-law, I need rice on my food, <laughs> on my plate. I want to enjoy the sauce that you make. <laughs> Right. So that that's changed, you know, and it's so small, but it's like it's so big for me. Um, the uh, other areas would be like my my kids. I would take them, you know, the, my son now, my older son has <laughs> his name is Theo and he has his own workout plan. He's uh, he's uh, written his own, you know, every day, 10 push ups, 10 burpees, 20 jumping jacks. And and he's created his own fitness plan. Uh, and I. I think it's inspired by me, you know, I think it's the challenges that we do, the community challenges. And, you know, uh, today we're going to do, you know, what 20 squats or whatever it is. And he sees that you see, you see my kids participate in those challenges yeah. and it's inspired my son to create his own workout plan like that. That's so freaking cool. <laughs> I should take a video for you guys. This, I'll show you a picture of his workout plan. You guys can give me some feedback on if it's good, what, what he's missing. <laughs> That's really cool. That's really cool to hear. <clears throat> yeah, when you first started doing the uh, community challenges, especially the push-up ones, I would see your kids doing it with you. I just thought that's so dope. Like, like your form is your probably really bad. I never fixed their form. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll get Jada. We'll get Joe over there. We we'll get back to back people. <clears throat> All right. So um, now, before coming to the Dream Team Academy, obviously you've done some other programs in the past. I guess, like, what is probably the the biggest misconception about fat loss. What do you think being in part of us now being a part of the program? Why do you think pe so many people fail when it comes to like self love, trust in the process and actually like making it a lifestyle, not having to race to a goal weight. Like, what do you think the biggest misconception is? Biggest misconception. Well, why do you think people fail? I think it's because they don't, they don't take the moment to feel like, so when you've, you know, there's so many times, you know, Coach Pat, that I felt like I failed so many times. And it's like, if I didn't take that moment to sit in that failure, to feel that failure, and then to think through that failure, like, what is it like, think about, it's not just sit like, I got to figure out what is the end goal? Like, I have my whole lifetime ahead of me to to figure this out, you know, like I don't I might have failed right now, but it doesn't mean I'm failing for the rest of my life. I can I just need to get past this moment, feel it, understand it. I don't want to be here again. And then and then and then push through. 
you know and i think it's it's those moments it's it's that you're you got to you got to just sit in it and just you know i might have failed today i might have failed today but doesn't mean i i can i have to fail for the, that doesn't mean i'm going to be a failure for the rest of my life you know i failed in this moment i didn't get my four workouts in this week you know i've got next week and i'll do better next week like that's it like just sit in it understand it i don't want to feel like this again next week and I'm going to do something about it and then just, and then do it, <laughs> you know, just, just know and feel that like, you know, I don't want to feel like this ever again and then go do it. <laughs> Sarah, uh, these interviews are getting too insane. Like every single one is just like, wow. Like even me, when you said that, I was like, today, I'm like, I feel like a failure today. Like I shit you not today. I felt like a failure. I'm like, but I knew like, I'm going to sit in there. I am running away. Like, this is where I need to be. If this is to get to the next level, I ain't shying away from it. I'm like, I am here. I am committed. And when you commit to a process, it's not going to be nice and rainbow and sunny all the time. Otherwise, you'd have the results. We'd all have the body of our dreams. We'd all have the house of our dreams. We'd all have whatever we want if it was that fucking easy. And then there was another part of me. There was This is funny because it's probably so Asian of me. <laughs> and I'm like, I paid money for this. Like, I'm going to stick to this program. <laughs> like, I am not going to let my money go away. <laughs> because, <laughs> and then I was like, you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta do it, Grace. You didn't pay to not do things. Like, what the, you know, go do it. Go do it. And, and I love that. Firstly, it's so relatable. <laughs> like, I'm Chinese, so I understand. Uh, so <laughs> It's such an agent thing. Uh, but one thing I learned from one of my mentors was whether it's a dollar a day a program, whether it's $1,000 a month, or if it's $10,000 a month, it doesn't matter how much it costs. It's about keeping the promises to yourself, no matter the parameters. And when I learned that, I felt so empowered. I'm like, if I'm going to invest in a mentor or a coach, whether it's $50 a month, $100 a month, $500 a month, whatever month it is, or how much fine... I will bring the best version of me to the program in front of me because I can trust me to follow it. And if I can trust me to follow it through the ups and downs, I can do other things. You know what I mean? So I love that you mentioned that because yeah, like when you pay for something, you're in, you're invested. You're like, oh, well, I put my money I mean, in. I worked very hard for it. You thought about it. You, we, you, you, you know, when before, you know, when we were, it's, when you were talking about the program, it's like those questions were asked. You know, are you going to do this or not? Like, and you got to like, yeah, I, I made that decision. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm, you know, and that, I'm not going to just let it go. Like, no, like I invested in this. You got to continue. You got to push, push through. Yes. So what's your advice now? You know, you have so much value to give because you went through like the ups and downs of this journey. Like there's probably been times where you felt like quitting. There's probably been multiple times where you look in the mirror, like, I feel like a failure, but you got to the other side and you're continuing. Like we have a new journey, like right now, I'm very excited to be working with you right now, a new chapter, which is really cool. Um, but what advice do you have for all the new people that are thinking about starting their journey, whether it's with the DTA or by themselves, like what advice would you have for them? You know, the, just, it's, it's, it's always the right time to invest in yourself. You know, it doesn't, you know, put yourself first. And if you're thinking, you know, is now the time? Uh, maybe it'll, I, you know, I have all these things coming up. You know, that's that's probably the right time because if you can get past it, those obstacles that you already see coming up and you started that journey and you face those obstacles, it will be easier later. Like it's first bitter than sweet. Like that. that's like, that's how I, I want my whole whole life like I think that's how I want to live like I just want to go through the really hard things in the beginning you know and then and then know that later on uh, it's going to be easier one of the reasons why I started <laughs> this sounds so vain but one of the reasons why I joined the DTA is because I wanted to be a really hot 50 year old <laughs> I, I'm not even close to 50 yet but that's what I wanted and I'm like if like, I'm not going to be a hot 50 year old when I'm 50. Like I got, it's going to be so much harder <laughs> to do that. Like, I, why don't I just start now? So when I'm 50, I can, I'm, I'm hot already. <laughs> like, yeah, look, I I'm just, a, yeah, we can double down on that. You know, strength training is going to get you there. It already has like your glutes, 
toned up, no cellulite, everything sits up, it's not sitting down. And as you go on into your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, that can continue to happen because you learn the principles of strength training and the dream body system. So a lot of people that do cardio, they'll run away. I'm going to get my dream body. I'm going to turn up, I'm going to look sexy. And everything just sags more and more and more. So you have the, um, you have everything you need right now. Like, there's yeah, nothing and that I feel so prepared. Like, I feel ready for my 50s. And it's just like, I'm, I'm thinking ahead, you know, I was like, I, I got to invest in myself now to make sure that that's the person I'm going to be later. Mm, and that yeah. was one of the main reasons why I, I joined is because I'm like, I, I, I that's, that's what I want. <laughs> got to do mm. something about it today. I'm not going to wait till I'm 49. I'm not going to wait till I'm 50. I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> And you did it. Well, congratulations, Grace. Me, on behalf of the whole DTA family and community, we want to say thank you for gracing us with your presence. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just, you know, just showing up. Ups and downs, you've always shown up. So proud of you. To, I'm proud to be coaching you. I'm proud to get to know you. Um, we're doing a lot of side projects together. And yeah, it's it's been an honor to be coaching you. So thank you again. Oh, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for showing up today. <laughs>